Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and I have been making Flat Earth videos for several years at this point, and something that Flat Earthers don't seem to realise is, I know all the Flat Earth arguments already. Not only do I know all the Flat Earth arguments, I know how to refute them as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rapid fire flat earth arguments off the top of my head and then I'm going to give a quick and simple debunk to them. So the first one that we're going to talk about is the quintessential flat earth talking point we see too far. So this flat earth talking point commonly ignores something. Sometimes that something is refraction and sometimes it's the observer height. With the latter you do have to make sure your observer height is properly accounted for but with the former this means that you cannot say because this observation doesn't match exactly what I say that we should see on a globe therefore the globe doesn't exist because refraction can still be playing a part. The question with these observations shouldn't be does this match exactly what we expect to see on a globe but does this more closely fit the flat earth or the globe earth model? Of course when we've got observations like this where the bottoms of buildings are disappearing that's closer to what we would expect to see on a globe than on a flat earth. But that can be explained by perspective. I should probably give the flat earthers a different voice. But that can be explained by perspective. If you want to say that perspective does anything, firstly, it's a good idea to know the formula for perspective because the formula for perspective does not say that anything should disappear over the horizon. But let's say that you're operating on a different kind of perspective. Okay, well, how does that perspective work and how does it differ to what we would expect to see on a globe? The Rayleigh criterion and the angle of attack explain why things disappear bottom first. Well, no, it doesn't. The Rayleigh criterion just shows when something will become unresolvable. If the top half of something is resolvable, then there's no reason why the bottom half shouldn't be. You can actually try to simulate this by scaling an image down. You see when you scale an image down it loses a lot of the resolution that it has and a lot of the finer details get lost but one thing that you'll never see is the bottom of buildings disappear because some things are now unresolvable. Objects don't go over the horizon because you can zoom back in on them to bring them back into view. Well whenever I see someone try to zoom in on something to bring it back into view it's because it's just gotten too small to resolve without zooming in on it, not because it's gone over the horizon. I've never seen a flat earther bring an object back into view that has disappeared bottom first over the horizon. It just hasn't been done. Gas pressure cannot exist next to the vacuum of space without a solid barrier because otherwise all the atmosphere would get sucked off. This argument completely ignores the fact that as you get higher in elevation, the air pressure decreases. So logically, if you get high enough, you're going to find yourself in a vacuum. Water finds its own level, meaning that it will always be flat and will never take the shape of a globe. And surface tension doesn't count, neither do waves. So the first thing that this argument ignores is the fact that tides exist, meaning that sea level will change over the course of a day. And high tide does not occur everywhere at the same time. So the oceans can't be completely level. Ignoring waves obviously because you know they say that waves don't count. But more importantly saying that water always finds its level is oversimplifying the shape that water actually takes. A better descriptor would be water conforms to the forces acting upon it. Thus if there is a force acting upon it to make it curve then yes it will curve. Gravity is just a theory. Ah yes the whole Evolution is just a theory, except we've got the flat earth version here. Of course the people that say this don't realise that when we talk about scientific theories we're not talking about a guess, like what a lot of people mean when they use the word theory. Scientific theories need to fit the data that we have available but they also need to have evidence to back them up, otherwise they are dismissed and not accepted. If gravity is real then why won't water stick to a basketball rather than flowing off of it? Because the gravitational pull of earth far exceeds that of a basketball. If gravity is so strong then why can birds fly and why do magnets defy gravity? Well birds fly and magnets defy gravity by creating a force that is larger than the force that would otherwise bring it to the ground. Helium balloons float so therefore gravity must not be acting upon it because otherwise it would fall to the ground. Well that is because there is another force acting upon it in opposition to gravity and that is buoyancy. This force is created because gravity also affects air particles and these air particles will try to force things out of their way if they can but this force has to act upon the force of gravity acting upon other objects. In the case of a helium balloon the gravitational force acting upon that is so low compared to that of air that it can just be pushed out of the way pretty easily. Gravity is not a force like Newton says because Einstein's 
said that it's not a force and Einstein replaced Newton. Well, you can still use Newton's equations and treat gravity like a force because under certain circumstances, they still work. It's just that Einstein's field equations are much better for predicting things like the orbit of Mercury and gravitational lensing. Einstein says that the Earth is moving up at 9.81 meters per second squared, so therefore, the only way that that works is if the Earth is flat and moving up at 9.81 meters per second squared. So this comes from not understanding that under Einstein, there are four dimensions and these dimensions are curved. You know, that's why you get the curvature of space-time. This does mean that yes, the surface of the Earth is accelerating upwards at 9.81 meters per second squared, but it can only do this because of the curvature of space-time, and it can do this as a sphere. The end result is that you've got a sphere that's accelerating outwards from the center at 9.81 meters per second squared, but due to the curvature of space-time, it keeps the same size. It's really weird to think about, but just because people don't understand it doesn't mean that it isn't what's happening. To understand this fully, you need to understand that what we see in 3D space does not necessarily reflect what we see in 4D space-time. Again, it's a very difficult concept to wrap your head around. There are plenty of people out there that try to explain it, like Edward Current, for example. Einstein said that there is no optical experiment that can detect the motion of Earth, so how can we know that we're moving around the sun? We don't. This is because in relativity, if you're in motion, then that's indistinguishable from just everything moving around you. However, considering that the motions of the planets and everything makes a whole lot more sense when we're moving around the sun, we can safely assume that we are moving around the sun and that, you know, the planets and the sun aren't all moving around us. You don't need gravity, you just need relative density disequilibrium. Relative density disequilibrium makes no verifiable predictions that would be different to what gravity makes, so we cannot verify that relative density disequilibrium is an actual thing. Though this is also partially due to the fact that flat earthers refuse to come up with any kind of equations because when you come up with equations, you can then be shown to be wrong. Once you go flat, you never go back. No flat earther has ever stopped being a flat earther. Well, there's Rachie, there's Ranty, there's Seek Truth, Speak Truth, and I believe there's someone called Tiger Dan, maybe? There is also someone else who I'm not going to mention here because he is embarrassed by the fact that he used to make flat earth content. So yeah, there are certainly people who used to be flat earthers and who are no longer flat earthers. The horizon is always flat, so therefore the earth must be flat. Well, you'd be wrong. This experiment here shows that even fairly close to the ground, you can see that the horizon does indeed curve. But Neil deGrasse Tyson said that you cannot see curvature from an airplane, so that must be wrong. Neil deGrasse Tyson saying something does not determine reality, in case you hadn't figured that one out. Also, Neil deGrasse Tyson was talking about with the naked eye, it's very difficult to see curvature from the airplane, especially when you consider the fact that, you know, airplanes only fly just above the clouds, and so when you get clouds that are off in the horizon, you can't really see a curve from up there. That being said, Greater Sapien does have a video where he does show a curved horizon from an airplane. This is only possible because the horizon there is actually pretty clear. But that is a fisheye lens. Fisheye lenses would only create a curve that resembles the curve of the Earth out of a straight line if that line is above the center of frame, not below it. Fisheye lenses don't just magically give Earth curvature no matter what, it's very particular about how it does this. The horizon always rises to eye level. Well, the Greater Sapien video would disagree with you. Also, I have checked this myself and no, it, it doesn't. You're just wrong. Moonlight is cord light. It isn't. When people try to show that it is, it's because of radiative cooling. The things that are out of the moonlight usually have something nearby to stop heat from escaping. And even if moonlight was cold light, that wouldn't have any effect on the shape of the Earth. If flat Earth is so ridiculous, then why does YouTube censor us? Well, YouTube doesn't actually censor flat Earth. It just tries not to recommend flat Earth as much. But the reason for this is because advertisers aren't really big fans of advertising on websites that facilitate the spread of misinformation and conspiracy theories. And because it is a lot easier to just make something up than it is to show that something has been made up, misinformation always has an edge over the stuff that debunks it. So YouTube has decided, okay, 
yeah, probably best not to promote conspiracy theories and misinformation on our website. They're trying to hide the shape of the Earth to hide God, because if you think that you're just a monkey on a spinning space ball, then you'll think that you're insignificant so a God can't exist. Well, there are plenty of Christians that believe that the Earth is a globe. In fact, the majority of Christians believe that the Earth is a globe. So if the Earth being a globe is supposed to make us all not believe in God, then they're doing a really bad job at it. They're trying to hide the shape of the Earth to hide the lands beyond the ice wall. Well, we've known that the Earth is a globe for about 2,000 years. We've known Antarctica has existed for about 200 years, so that can't have been the original motivation for saying that the Earth is a globe. Anyway, I think I'm going to end this video here because I have by no means gone through every flat Earth argument, but I think the fact that so many of them can just easily be shown to be false is a very good indication that Flat Earth shouldn't be taken seriously. These are all arguments that not only have I debunked before, but other people have debunked them before. I'm by no means the first person to debunk any of these arguments. If they were actually convincing, then I'd be a Flat Earther, but they're not. They're not convincing to anyone that actually goes ahead and thinks about it. There's a reason why out of all conspiracy theories, Flat Earthers seem the most ridiculous, because out of all conspiracy theories, they're the easiest to debunk. Well, there are others that I find easier to debunk, but that's because I've, you know, looked at this stuff a bit more. That's a subject for a completely different video, so let's push that to the side. Anyway, leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. Leave a comment letting me know what you'd like to see me make videos on in the future. Maybe you want to see a part two to this or something. I don't know. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. Huge R's, MC Nutkin, Mori, Vermont1777, Tony C, Rosina Keller, Wolfie, Kid Vicious, Sarcha Campbell, definitely not NASA, Craig D'Amelio, Rigid M. Chapman, Kaylee, and Fist Wizard. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. There should be a link there. Or you could buy me a coffee. I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.